what community wouldn't want a program that takes young men and women that are struggling with addictions and making that legal living and having that sense of self-worth. We take those young men and women, we grab a hold of them, use that school of hard knocks to teach you how to go to work, to teach you how to make that legal living, to teach you how to have that sense of self-worth and work ethic, to teach you how to be the top of the shift instead of that, that one that's struggling to even get hired, to teach you how to be the best worker. I mean... I just had a talk with our young men in the jailhouse last Wednesday. And you're going to hear about this one, the Opioid Addiction Redirection Program that we're doing here in Shelby County. I just had that talk yesterday, or Wednesday, talking to them about you're going to have to be a better, stronger, more aware uh, worker just to be... Even when you got the stamp of the felony on your forehead, when you got no education, when you've got no qualities to give to your job, where do you think you start? You start at the bottom. And those that are starting at the bottom, when they have those felonies too, and you have that chip on your shoulder, it's hard for young men and women to be able to maintain in the workforce without good support. We call it a revolving door system because it really is. When we let young men and women out of the detention center with no place to live, no legal job, not even prospects, no education, still addicted to alcohol and booze, and no real support. And a trapper on your leg that costs you $15 a day, and uh, $50 a month for the administration of that, and $20 every time I make you pee in a cup. If you're clean, if you're dirty, it's 35 and I violate you. Where do you think we get the revolving door from? When you're let out, like I say, $15 a day, $105 a week, $420 a month, plus the $50, plus the $20 for being in here, $480 a month, just before you have spent your first dollar on living, on rent, food, transportation. $480 when you've never made a legal dollar in your life, and you've got to pay that before you even start paying for yourself. A lot of us would struggle with that, paying that $480, having that taken out of your check. And we got a check. A lot of them don't. When they have then that probation parole home detention officer that looks you right in the eye and says, you owe $300, $500, $2,000. When are you going to start making payments on that? I'm trying to get a job. I'm trying to get a job. I'm trying They'll give them more community service to do. I've had young men come to us with classes three days a week from 10 to 12, where they're drug classes, 10 in the morning till 12 in the morning. And then, you know, uh, uh, restrictions where they've got uh, uh, probation or different ob obligations that they have to do in the afternoon. Um, then they have a home visit that's coming in the middle of the day that they don't, can't say when, when it's coming. We call it a revolving door system because we set them up to fail. We have 20%, over 20% of our population in the detention centers right now. They're saying by 2025 it'll be closer to 25%. 10,000 baby boomers a week retire right now in the United States, 10,000. There are not 10,000 new kids joining the workforce every week. <clears throat> right now, every one of you guys that are working are paying for one or two on the entitlements, in prison, holding their hands up. What do you think by 2025? Um, that one person's gonna be paying for four or five. You think our taxes are bad now? Um, 
when the detention center is full of drug addicts and alcoholics. It can't hold the violent offenders.